Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our brand new show on Imam Hussain TV, Making a House a Home. My name is Raghad and with me I have Fahima Muhammad, a qualified life coach and NLP practitioner, who will be discussing how to overcome today's struggles faced by families within their homes. Today's topic will be how to build a better relationship with your children. Assalamu alaikum Fahima. Alaikum salam. Thank you for coming today. Thank you very much for having me. Can you start off by telling us a bit more about yourself and explaining to our viewers about life coaching and NLP? Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, life coaching is something that you would turn to if you want to live in a much more fulfilled and happier life. If you want to ha be successful professionally and personally with all your relationships. So if you feel that you want to take your life to the next level, then for everyday challenges and everyday issues, this is life coaching for you. It's a safe space, it's non-directive, it's non-judgmental, non-biased, and it will actually get you to air out whatever issues and you know whatever you feel without thinking that there is actually a problem that needs fixing because you don't actually need fixing. We believe that we use our clients' own potential to get them to whichever level and whichever standard in their life that they want to achieve. Um, NLP, on the other hand, is a little bit more like therapy. Um, so I combine the both with my practice. Um, I do not just one-to-one -one coaching, but I also do um, coaching within groups, whether it's in companies or institutes, in schools. And um, NLP is about um, understanding the way in which the human mind you know, thinks. And linguistics is about the language that we use. And um, programming is the habits that we create. Okay, so so that's that NLP stands for. Yes, neuro-linguistic programming. So okay. that's how it's sort of you know, broken down. And we can actually change the way we think, change the language we use, and also being aware of our habits, change that to actually form better habits and form better ways in which we see things. And with those you know, paradigms that exist within us, then we can actually create better lifestyles. So just to clarify to our viewers, um, life coaching isn't so much fixing a problem, it's more about enhancing uh, what you already have or enhancing Absolutely. your lifestyle. Yes, definitely. Okay. And I'm not just qualified as a general life coach, I have actually been qualified in mindfulness coaching, relationship and couples coaching, ex existential, uh, positive psychology and group and faci facilitation within companies and organizations. But today we'll be talking about uh, coaching within the family between uh, parents yes. and their children. Yes. And children, when I say children, we mean children of all ages, so yes. from, from young children to adulthood, the, adult, adult yes, children. Absolutely. Yeah. I think yeah. it's vital to understand that relationships, you know, will change over the time, but at the same time, it's important not just for parents to have good relationships with their children growing up when they're young, but to build these sort of relationships so they can carry forward even into adulthood. Okay. Um, generally, I think relationships um, is important, obviously, for our families. You know, even if I go into companies, um, you can be skilled and talented, but if you don't have good relationships, then even you won't be able to work properly. So, you know, it is my forte to discuss relationships in any sort of setting. And obviously, yeah. being in a family, it's the most vital. So relationship starts off literally when you are a child. When you are home. That's your yes. first relationship with your parents. Absolutely. So your parents' relationship with you will more or less determine how you carry, yes, carry on through life. Yes, of course. You know, when we are, you know, come into this world, our bond and our connection and our, you know, existence is mainly with our family members and siblings and, you know, extended relations. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand the impact of the relationships that you have in your home and that is carried forward, you know, how you are at school, how you are, you know, with your colleagues, and how you are with anyone generally. And it does stem from the foundations of the house. Of course. Yes. Um, studies do show that, you know, um, having good relationships does, you know, relax our mind, you know, it helps us with our nervous system, and you can have all the materialistic, you know, um, 
requirements that you need in your home or in your life but without good relationships there's never real happiness and fulfillment yeah a lot of parents uh, who don't make the time or the effort Absolutely, to yeah. build uh, the good relationships with their children end up just buying them loads of uh, yeah. go goodies as they call gifts, them yes and gifts uh, thinking that it will enhance uh, the relationship or enhance the atmosphere at home yeah I mean that's why the understanding here today is mainly or even for the show is to help with my studies previously knowing about about today's um, psychology like everyone's talking about mindfulness and positivity and even existentialism which is about you know finding meaning and purpose in life so all of these things exist around us today and I want to bring that with today's psychology as well as the way in which we live you know mm -hmm. in Islam as Muslims and with the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt and everything that's been taught in today's psychology I've always found it very easy to refer to it being exactly that and we always think that it's difficult to have our religion, you know, you know, enforced in our everyday lives, but actually it isn't. It's just named differently. It's labeled differently. So I'm trying to bring the two together to make parents, to make children, to make families understand that everything that's happening around us is within our religion. And um, you're saying about some people, sometimes religion can be a bit, make it more difficult. But in fact, no, religion can make it easier because it's, it's, it's giving us the right guidelines. Direction, it's, yes. The right directions of, of what, what's better for the, fa for the family, what's better for the children. So in fact, for, it, it goes hand in hand, religion Absolutely. and lifestyle. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's just the way we look at things. I mean, life yeah. coaching just opens up a new avenue and a new perspective. Yeah. And it helps you sort of see things in not so very, you know, narrow-minded view. And our religion it might have been started many, many centuries ago, but at the same time, it is very current. And that's why I find that it's important to discuss, you know, how we should live and how to take our religion forward. And, you know, it is modern. It is, you know, upcoming. It's just the way where we, you know, discuss all these issues and we bring it into our households and make our children understand. But we have to have that understanding first as adults, as parents. Mm -hmm. so that we can you know filter these sort of information so that we can have the best relationships we can and it starts really with the parents a lot of people come to me saying that their children need coaching and they cannot control their children mm -hmm. but I find when I have a word with the parents I think they need the coaching first because children are especially at a young age they just mirror us mm -hmm. and they they sort of like copy what we do and it's not just what they see, you know, how we act to them. We have to actually be a certain way, even when we are talking to other people outside. For example, if we're in a car and there's a bit of like, you know, tension with traffic and there's road rage, if you as a parent is going to carry on and react and, you know, respond in a particular way, that's what your child is watching. A lot of parents do do feel, oh, my child's out of control, or I don't know what to do with with the child. Let me take him to life coaching or therapy, yeah. Yeah. and they just forget. They do forget that actually it starts with them as parents. Ex exactly. Even when the child is still a baby, and he's yes. a, you, you think that he doesn't understand. Senses, but actually, yeah. he's watching your every move. He's yes. watching your every bit of anger, your every bit of shouting, Absolutely. and that's where where it all starts. Um, having said that. It's never too late, is it? No, absolutely yeah. not. Um, I know everyone says it's good to start from a young age. And yes, ideally it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even if you start from a young age, the connections can be broken. The bonds can be, you know, a little bit, you know, uneasy at certain stages because we all grow, we all change. But we need to understand that change is ine inevitable and with anything in life, let alone children growing up. And we need to understand their psychology. You know, as parents, it, it is a gift to be and it's a blessing. But we can't take it lightly and we can't take it for granted. We need to educate ourselves nowadays. We need to sort of, you know, not just bring our children up the way our parents brought us up. We need to understand that the way in which they think, the environment they're in, and we need to bring them up in certain ways because of our own learning. Mm. And our thoughts are so important. And it's narrated even um, Imam Ali alayhi salam has, you know, has said, like, what's your thoughts? Because they become your words. Like, what's your words? Because they become your actions. What's your actions? Because they become your habits. What's your habits? Because they become your character. And what's your character? Because they become your destiny. And that's really powerful, just from your thought. And we think that we can think whatever we want, and we can actually do something, and our children should be told and conform in a different way to the way we do things. But actually, it doesn't work that way.
Yeah, it's a big mistake that a lot of parents do. A lot of parents. It's okay, I can do that, but I won't do it in front of my children. Yes. Or I'll teach my children that what I'm doing is wrong, not don't do that. And I do see a lot of parents, they'll do something and then they'll tell their children, please don't be like me, I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> yes. They don't realize that the children, as you said earlier, mirror everything you they do. They mirror everything. Subconsciously. And they will go for the ones that you really don't want them to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So it's really important um, that, like you said, you know, we have to be role models. You want something good for someone else, then you have to be that way. You know, um, you have to treat people like how you want to be treated. A lot of people have problems with behavior as well in their children. And it stems from, you know, understanding child development, knowing that their memory is different, they will forget, and when they're young, you have to be, you know, reminding them a little bit more. It might be frustrating, but it's the way you as a parent look at that. Why would you find it frustrating when you know that their memory is not as good. We as adults cannot, you know, remember all the time. Yeah. But it's your attitude. Attitude is really important. And yes, we are nowadays, especially in our households, with everything, with technology, with the advancements and so much, but the household, you know, lifestyle is declining. You know, there's lots of, you know, high rates of divorce and separation. Mm -hmm. You know, relationships between spouses are not even friendly anymore so that yeah. children don't even see the mom and dad getting along so they don't get how along with know, their siblings. How they know what it's like to be friendly at home. Exactly. That's, they think it's the norm, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And how about the parents, now what you're saying about parents being um, a role model, how about the parents that say, um, actually, we're at work most of the day um, and we only get to see our children about two or three hours? Uh, during the day, and they're mainly with their with the nanny or in the nursery. Mm -hmm. How would they? How would what would you tell them? How would you tell them? Uh, how would you guide them in uh, being a good role model to their children? Um, that's a very interesting question. A lot of parents complain about time. Um, one point is that time is what you know you want to make of it. And with mind mindfulness, it's not about how much time you have. It's about what you do with that time. And if you focus on the time that you have, doing what you need to do, spending that quality time with your child, mm -hmm. and focusing that you know um, that we're going to do certain activities and we're going to spend certain amount of time, say before bed or you know during bath time or dinner time, where we're going to have conversations. Then those five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour, or whatever it is that you spread along the week can be just as vital because there are parents that stay at home and they can be in front of their children all the time but they're not actually with their children okay they're not actually spending time with them so even those two three hours yes. can be utilized in a positive yes. way absolutely it's and you all can about set focusing. a good example to your yes. children in that two or three yeah. hours well that's what mindfulness teaches us which mm. is around every time it's about being focused in the moment that you're in and making the best of it doesn't matter how long you have you can still have a really good and great and amazing impact on your child you have to have organization skills, you have to have routine, you have to have discipline, and you have to be your word. And your children need to see that. If you make a promise, you've got to keep it too. Mm -hmm. And if you say that, you know, there's certain things you're going to take away from them, if you're going to like, you know, I wouldn't say punish them, you know, it's very harsh because I don't like, it's about positive discipline. So it's about making them understand why they've been told certain things and why things being taken away from them because of these, co these are the mm -hmm. consequences. Mm -hmm. Because discipline is all about trying to help them have more self-control. Yeah, and speaking of discipline, um, that's where a lot of the working parents go wrong because they feel so guilty leaving their children all yeah. day long. Um, so they feel like, you, they don't want to discipline the child yes. uh, because they don't want to lose the child's love. Uh, but you're saying discipline is actually very important it's no very matter important. How, how much you, you feel that you don't want to hurt the child's feelings or you don't want to distance the child. You're saying that it's actually very important and it brings them possibly yeah. closer. Yes, I mean, that's why it goes back to understanding child development and psychology. Mm. You have to read up about it. At the end of the day, we need to build children for the next generation who are strong mm. and motivated, who know what it's like to be in a team, who know that life is tough. You're not going to get everything. You're not going to have everything that you want. But at the same time, you know, you're going to provide them the safety, the security, the welfare that they need, mm. but without the overspoiling because you feel guilty. You don't need to feel guilty. You're providing for them in many ways, which they don't understand and see. You don't need to tell them, but as they get older, they will understand. But if you're going to spoil them, and if you're going to have them take advantage over those things, you know, children are also getting clever nowadays. They're very clever. So they will also ride they on you. Yes, they, yes, they will ride on you, yeah. and you will actually lose control over them. 
They and sense the guilt. Yes. They sense the fear. Yes. They sense the lack of control. Absolutely. And they know how to play, yeah. play with that. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you want um, children growing up in a particular way, uh, with good behavior, it's good to have rules and regulations. It's set, it's routine because they feel safe. Then they know that this is what needs doing. Mm -hmm. And it actually sets them into a really good habit for later on. And that's when parents find that as teenagers or when they start you know, secondary school, they have no organization skills, they have to be on top of them even when mm -hmm. they're older, only because those routines have not been set from a young age. And even if you have got grandparents or nannies, whoever they are looking after your children, you need to have that, you know, that sort of level of uh, communication and of relationship with them to sort of you know, tell them, this is how I want my child to be brought up. Mm -hmm. The strict rules and regulations can be carried forward by the, whoever's looking after them. Yes. And it should be. Yes. Those things should be discussed. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, the children know and have been told and there has to be communication, that certain things have been said and done, you know, the day has carried on with the routine that you would normally set as well. Mm -hmm. So they realize that it's followed through, you know, with the nanny, the grandparent, as well as the parents. Yeah, um, I met uh, two children a while ago and um, we were faced by a, a mother who was shouting at her children, mm -hmm. uh, giving them instructions, telling them I think not to run or something. And the two children uh, turned around and told me, you know what, I'm really glad that my, par my parents are strict with me because that way they never shout at me because I know exactly what I need to do all the time. So my, my mom actually never shouts at me. And I was actually, I was taken back by that. I just thought, wow, that's actually, it's coming from a child who yes. appreciates his parents having strict rules and regulations so that the parents don't have to sh constantly shout at them, constantly throw instruction at yes, them. Yes, yes, that is a good point. But at the same time, now that you say that, um, parents that do feel they don't have control, because it's not easy, you do have mm -hmm. difficult children, mm -hmm. different characters, and parents get overwhelmed. And it's very, very normal to sort of feel mm -hmm. that, you know, you are pressured by outside, you know, environment, your own work, and then it's very easy to lash out. So you need to have practices like meditation. It's really healthy for you and your child. And even if they're young, and it only takes literally three to five minutes, if they're sitting in silence, reflecting for the day. In Islam, it says to reflect. It says to have that. So when you and your child are doing this together, it's such a good way of bonding and connecting. Yeah. It's a good way of getting them to be a disciplined child yeah. and actually being in the moment so that when you find that they are actually um, misbehaving, Mm. your reactions are a lot calmer and you're not actually mm. reacting you're responding so as a life coach um, when you think reflecting and meditating would it be a good idea as a family to come together uh, for that five minutes and do something like salat jama'a ah? and then all praying for something that you all want Absolutely. as a family like a, uh, you know to, to go on a holiday or even a bigger yeah. home or yeah. a, an extra sibling you know to all come together and pray for that one thing that everyone in yes. the family wants that would yeah. be quite routine a good is idea. important yeah. even when it comes to your salah it's not about being robotic and explaining to your children that this is what the rules are in Islam it's about having them understand the meaning and you know having them mm. actually understand why we're doing certain things mm. and when you have that dua is important that will enhance and help you with your relationship and with your connections mm. with your children and um, I find that even if you don't want to bring uh, so much like all the time Islam says this Islam says that you don't need to bring those labels in especially for mm. children which they don't have that you know mm. understanding yet yeah. for young children so you know there are meditations which is grounding mm. meditation which just helps them you know just feel safe in their home just to know that yeah. their parents are there, yeah. that they have, you know, they're setting around them in a particular way that keeps them, you know, really safe. And that's what, you know, children really want, is to feel safe and secure. And if your family, your parents can give that to you, then they will turn to you always, mm. knowing that they can come to you for anything. Yeah. Because you've already set that foundation. Yeah. So what my question to you is, can you put Salah under the umbrella of meditation in terms of a family oh, Absolutely. Activity? I mean, you know, Salah, if you were to actually perform it with the right intention, mm -hmm. it is actually that kind of feeling anyway, right. of feeling, you know, revitalized. Mm -hmm. If we understood 
you know, what it actually brings out for us mm -hmm. and made our children understand it, that it's not just a robotic routine, it's not on autopilot, mm -hmm. that we just got to do these set things and tick it off the boxes. Because yeah. yeah. that's what we do even as adults. It's something that we co come all together, yeah. like I say, feel safe, uh, even feel safe in the knowledge that Allah can, uh, can protect us guide as a family us. and guide yes. us and hopefully give us um, direction, yeah. direction and, and give us what grants us what we've asked for as well at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. It gives them a bit of um, ambition, a bit of... Um, yeah. It just this kind of uh it's feeling of you know feeling really like you know we belong you know children want yeah. to feel that they belong mm. and they're connected mm. and people always say well you know there's it's so difficult with time but i'm i'm sorry but the same parent will have time if there was a gada if there was some sort of heiress yes. they'll be fully yeah. make up and you know it come back from work yeah. and they'll arrange it so it's not about yeah. time yeah, she'll come back from work she would have <laughs> exactly. arranged the arrange the exactly. she's got everything ready the dress is out on the bed <laughs> yeah. I'm going out today, but but the day that she wants to sit with her kids or her children, it's difficult. Um, she'll you know she'll be like, I need to cook, I need to clean, yeah. I need to do other things now, and uh, so you know we all have excuses. Yes. yes, we have to have that mindset that we are giving a responsibility. We are given a responsibility when we have children. Don't take it lightly. We are mm. accountable for our deeds, not just for ourselves, but what we transfer to our children, and whatever deeds they have in the future. We can have a big impact by the way in which we teach them, we bring them up, and their choices as adults will reflect that. Even if they make mistakes, no one's going to say you're going to have perfect children, but we can catch them when we, they fall. They will hopefully not make mistakes that are too severe. They will come out of their mistakes and make the right choices in the end. It's not about perfection. It's about correcting yourself. Mm -hmm. It's about knowing that if you've done wrong, you can admit it and you can correct it and you can make it right. And it's about doing the best we can. Yes. Okay, Fahima, thank you very much. Um, I think we're coming towards the end of the first half of our show. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully after the break, we'll be taking some questions from the viewers uh, regarding uh, building better relationships with their children and how they can uh, be empowered as parents, uh, how, can, how can they give the confidence to their children and just generally answer the questions that they have. Okay. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Welcome back to our show, Making a House a Home, where today we are discussing how to build a better relationship with your children. Uh, for Sister Fahima, we have some questions from our viewers mm -hmm. um, that just wanted to know how to build a better relationship with their children or where they can improve or where they're going wrong. Yes. Um, so I have the first question uh, from Sister Zahra. A lot of the time my child does things which I need to correct him for or tell him off for. How can I make my relationship better with him if I'm telling him off often? I mean, that is obviously a problem which I always get questioned about and we have to have a different attitude as parents. Firstly, we have to understand that, um, as I mentioned before, that children will be forgetful and our responses and reactions do have an impact. And we have to understand that children's behavior is normally their way of showing how they feel. It's their emotions. Mm -hmm. So you need to be aware of what exactly is the consistency within which they're misbehaving. And um, that's one point. I can't go exactly into detail because I don't know the exact misbehavior uh, of the, uh, the actual scenario. But um, overall, I would say find out from your child, you know, is there really something that they don't understand? Like if you're telling them to do certain things, you have to explain it to them in a certain way, whether it's in a story, whether it's giving them some sort of like idea of the consequences of them misbehaving and what happens. Because a lot of the time, we just direct information to them without giving them sort of understanding why they should not do it. Mm -hmm. And it's better not to even say why they should not do it, but actually just guide them as to what they should do. Mm -hmm. So all they have, because it's a very small amount of information that children can handle. Mm -hmm. So instead of being negative all the time and saying, you shouldn't do this because, say, you should do this because. So it's the way in which you give information to your children. So that's mm -hmm. why language is important. The kind of words you use has to be positive. The kind of reaction that you give them and the attitude. 
and you should have you have to be patient mm. because children at a young age I'm assuming this child is young that if they're being told constantly then you know they are probably also trying to seek attention because maybe mm. I'm just assuming that that's the only time you may even give them the attention is when they're being told off. So yeah. that's something to consider as well. And she was more con she was quite concerned about um, how not to ruin her relationship with her child by mm -hmm. telling him off. Um, possibly she can think about the way she tells him off. I wouldn't Does say affect, tell off at all. Yeah. It's about explaining. It's, more it's explaining, about reasoning. It? Mm. Yes. Or guiding. Guiding. Than telling off. It's positive discipline. Yeah. yeah. Because we're trying when we're trying to give information to children, especially when it comes to discipline, it's about having them, you know, take control themselves, giving them self control and disciplining themselves. Mm. So if you look at disciplining in that way, you will not be angry angered by what they do. Mm. Because you're just thinking of teaching them and even if it's the teaching which is constant and they are totally getting it wrong you have to check yourself it always yeah. comes down to you so going back to the NLP kind yes. of thing isn't it is it all starts off with how, how you think how you're thinking if you're thinking negatively about this child he's naughty he's yes. horrendous he's doing this on purpose and obviously you're gonna lash yeah. out on him yes uh, whereas if you're thinking in a positive way he's just learning yes he's uh, he needs a winding he's expressing himself yes then you'll you'll react differently yeah. won't you yeah. yeah I mean there are children that will play around and they will do things which is deliberate but then again that's also them Child expressing behavior. their emotions mm. Mm. so if they feel that they doing s if you feel that they're doing certain things to constantly get your attention then obviously attention needs to be given yeah. and um, that needs to be you know you need to take a step back and an analyze the whole scenario and situation as well mm. especially when there's more than one sibling involved mm. and if one sibling's playing up because maybe they're not getting the attention that they require and they're only getting the attention is when they're doing something bad and the parents giving them that sort of like you know feedback mm -hmm. and I understand even with, from the question that you've asked is that children you know she wants to praise her children more mm. and yes children need praise but don't make it fake make sure that the praise is given in that moment so when you actually see your child behaving and acting in a particular way, call them out straight away and say, mm. you know, I just noticed you just share with your brother mm. or sister. Thank and, you know, you. that's very, very, you know, yeah. um, amazing that you could do that. Adequate praising, yeah. not overpraising. Because sometimes over if you over, over praise a child, he yeah. becomes a bit, you know, um, overconfident. You know, thinking yeah, that. I mean, children are generally confident, you know, they do feel like they can express themselves yeah. and sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes yeah. it's not. Yeah. So it's not about that, it's about giving them sort of something to look forward to doing again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what I mean with the positive stuff. Encouragement. So when, they, when you catch them out doing certain things that are good, a kindness act, um, you know, a good gesture or whatever it may be, or being polite to their to their other family members mm -hmm. if they came from somewhere to visit or whatever it may be, then you actually are, you know, encouraging that child to do it again instead Call of saying, out on that. Yeah, and yeah. don't compare them to other children. Compare them to their previous behavior. Okay. Always compare them to themselves to show them that they can improve, they are mm -hmm. improving, mm -hmm. and there's always room for more improvement. Yeah. That's yeah. much more healthier. Okay. And even going back to telling off, um, you can say, yesterday you were such a good boy, you done this, 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 yes. what's going on today? Yeah. That's another way of Yeah, there could be something that happened and at negative school. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, I have another question mm -hmm. from Sister Rukaya, uh, and she asks, if the child is being looked after by a nanny or a grandparent, then how can I hold on to the same connection? Um, we discussed this a little bit earlier, yes. but can you discuss that a bit more? Of course. Yeah. Um, like I said, the connection between parent and child you know is is like um, it's 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 a spirit which is like a bond which is natural mm -hmm. and you can only create that and build that by the communications that you have with them and it's not just com communication like verbally it's the physical side of it it's the physiology side of it so you know hug them a little bit tighter make them feel you know that they actually you know they are still important mm. children only want as every adult does is just to feel that comfort and that safety and security and like I said you know those quality times needs to be you know really focused on the child when they're there in front of you and give them that space give them the time to talk and even talk about yourself and your day and open up so that they will open up back to you mm -hmm. so um, and you have to have a good relationship with you, the, per the person that's looking after your children because you know 
maybe a phone call during the day or a text message can be received and mm -hmm. that could be relayed by the nanny or the grandparent to say your mom's thinking about you your dad's saying hello or vice versa you know mm -hmm. um, if you want to have a word with mommy we'll send her a text and if she's busy she'll text back so there's always constant communication that there's mm -hmm. thought there doesn't mean that you know they're not there they are totally out of your life so you need to also when you come back, ask what would their day like. Listen to them. Listen to them. That's Not just the children, but also whoever's looking after them. Okay. Mm. So whoever's looking after them, you need to have that connection so that you become a team. Yeah. All How was their day together. today? How was their mood yeah. today? Yeah. And speak in front of the children so that the children can see there's a teamwork going on here. And you are concerned. You are concerned. You yeah. are interested. And you're taking time to actually, you know, be aware. Ask, ask about them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, seems like we have a lot of questions about working parents. Okay. Um, and uh, I've got another question from someone who hasn't put their name That's down. Fine. Uh, it says, "Can working parents have some connection as one who who is at home?" I think, like I said, when you're at home, you can be so easily distracted as well, thinking that you're with your child and you're giving them attention. But actually, I find that when you're away, you give more quality time. Mm -hmm. So that could be looked at as that as well. Yes. It yeah. depends on what kind of a parent you are. Exactly. In coaching, we identify four different types of parenting, you know. And obviously, you know, there's a parent that totally dismisses their child and doesn't really take any interest in their child. There's the other parent that is more taking interest in their child's behavior and emotions but are not actually acting upon it saying you feel this way and they will take note but they don't know how to deal with it mm. then you have the one that actually understand want to pay interest doesn't want to fix it for them but wants to see it from their perspective you know when you have children we want to fix it we want to you know do things for them but actually does harm we mm. need to see things from their side of you know the set their side of the world as well there's perspective especially teenagers yeah that's when you build a connection because you're not just informing them you're not just advising them you're actually understanding from their perspective first mm -hmm. and you know even in adult conversations mm -hmm. if you try and be empathetic there's a difference between sympathetic and empathetic mm -hmm. empathetic is putting yourself in someone else's shoes it's very quite impossible it's isn't very it? imp important that you try and put yourself in your children's shoes first mm -hmm. So your children could actually say that, you know, mom and dad are actually, you know, trying to see it from my side, even mm -hmm. if they don't agree with me. And in coaching, it will help you, you know, ask questions for whatever decisions your children have and have made so that you understanding them and they themselves will see if it's the wrong or right. And if they don't, then you can guide them. Okay, yeah. A lot of moms, I think, feel that because they're working, the stay-at-home moms are actually doing a better job. But like I said, it's not necessarily true. Um, a lot of stay-at-home moms are busy brunching, busy shopping, and, you know, not saying that, that that's the issue, it's but that's thing. the case. Yeah. But that is what a lot of stay-at-home moms do anyway. So I don't think that working moms should be too hard on themselves. I just always will come across to say, no matter whether you're <clears> working or not working, whether you feel that you have time or no, t no time, it's your mindset. If you have interest, if you have awareness, if you have that real, you know, way of being with yourself and filtering it down to your children, five minutes or an hour would not make a difference to you. Mm -hmm. You have a strong mind to take interest in your child's work, to be there for them. Mm -hmm. That even if you say one sentence could be more impactful than being at home all day and just talking a lot of, you know, something that doesn't have any impact at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's about you being a certain way. We need to assess ourselves continuously. Yeah. We need to understand who we are yeah. first. We need yeah. to know our values and our beliefs, yeah. and we need to relay that to our children. Yeah. For example, you know, when we make a promise, the most important thing in Islam is, you know, keeping your promise. People say, I have the right intention, and, you know, it didn't work out. Yeah. But you know what? If you had the right intention, that promise would be shown in that action. And if you cannot do that for your children and disappoint them, then how else are you going to be looked upon in the rest of society? Remember, our Prophet وسلم, peace be upon him and our fa and family, was only chosen as well. Um, one of the reasons was because he was trustworthy before he became the Prophet. He mm. had those qualities and characteristics mm. beforehand. Mm. So we need to build children with the morals and the virtues that we see all around us, even in, in the imams, times of struggle, mm -hmm. times of difficulty, how to be, you know, a certain way. But we have to be that first as parents. 
then we can teach that to our children. Yeah, I think that's where life coaching comes in because yes. a lot of parents are, who are working uh, carry guilt. Um, and that's no where need. you can come in and you can you can change that guilt into um, how to make it better and how to improve the, uh, the relationship, yeah. how to build the relationships in that small amount of time. Um, so why should a parent uh, go to sleep with the guilt in their heart? They should be able to sleep knowing that they've done their best and tomorrow will be a better day. And you know, the time of survived by imams, they had so much struggles and we always think that at the end of the day, we can't do what they do. We cannot be as good. Mm -hmm. But they manage that in the most severe times. Mm. And our times in this day and age, in the countries that we live in, mm. we have so much around us, we put the pressure on ourselves. We want the bigger house, we want the bigger cars, we want the extra pay, and yes, of course, you know, we have to live a certain lifestyle, but we put the pressure on ourselves. So at the end of the day, we have to also step back a bit and know what's our priorities. If we're gonna you know, want that expensive car, we're gonna work hard for it, but at what cost? So we need to analyze how we live in our homes. You know, we want to develop ourselves, but how do we develop ourselves? You know, are we going to leave a legacy where it's like a big house and a big car and a business? Or is it building children for generations that are actually going to follow through and, you know, help people around us and actually build better societies and generations to come? Mm -hmm. So we have to take responsibility, even if we don't, we're not parents. We have to conform a certain way according to our values and our beliefs so that we can actually show people in society that you know, living in this life is more than just the materialistic things, more than just conforming to just our secular education. Mm. It's more than that, because that's why problems are occurring today, because there's absolutely no understanding and no meaning, and that's where the value is lost in our homes. Mm. Okay, so um, just one more question mm -hmm. uh, to, before we finish off, um, and I think it's a good question to finish off with. Okay, so. Uh, this is a question from Fatima and she wants to know what is the impact of a good relationship for a child that is growing into adulthood? Um, like we said we can build and break relationships and connections throughout the stages but obviously mm. if you do have a really good bond from a young age mm. and you have built that you know connection with your child it will carry forward as adults as well and um, because you need someone to look back on, you need someone to sort of feel that, you know, they're looking at you mm. to actually give you that support and that guidance and you want to make them feel proud of you. And when you have a set way of living and believing with the right values and morals behind it, then obviously as an adult, you're going to make the right choices and decisions. And you're going to carry those teachings from when you were brought up to your own lifestyle. Yeah. So obviously the impact is huge and even in psychology, you know, it only takes one word that is negative that a child might hear and they can carry it through adulthood mm -hmm. thinking that that's how and who they are. Yeah. So there's many studies to show that actually, you know, bringing up children is very, very vital as to how they grow into adults. Mm. And if mm. there's one bad parent or if there's one word that's constantly being used to describe or label a child, they will believe that within themselves, mm. even silently. And, you know, it could actually have a negative impact. It just comes to show um, how much impact and how much uh, you have, how much of an importance you have to course, your child. That even if you call him uh, something like, uh, silly it will stay with yes. him that's what I am I'm yeah. silly they label themselves uh, they label themselves um, yeah. uh, upon what you have labeled them yes and absolutely. it just comes to show how important we are yeah. as parents and, and to guide them into their adulthood and who they become definitely yeah thank you for being here Fahima and I hope our viewers enjoyed today's uh, discussion and hopefully we'll be back next week for more uh, discussions on how to make a house a home. If you've been affected by the following topics raised in this episode, please contact your local GP or Fahira Muhammad on coachfm1 at hotmail.com.